Okay, so Dan, uh, you're the uh, one of the founders of, uh, of E-Rated. We're here at your office in, uh, in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, uh, we already met in Paris at the WeShare Fest and also uh, in, in, uh, in London. So we have uh, seen each other quite some times. Yes. Uh, yes. Great to be here. Thank you. For the people who don't know what, uh, what E-Rated is, uh, what is it? Well, we started E-Rated around three years ago because we wanted to make a change in how people are conceived in online marketplaces or in peer-to-peer -peer transactions in general. Today, there are over a thousand online marketplaces or classifieds, over 100 million sellers, and 90% of sellers operate cross markets. When we started identifying what are the issues in peer to peer transactions, how do we actually, people interact online, we were finding it very, very difficult to create trust in peer to peer transactions. When people are looking for an item or a service online, they're looking at three different factors price, the actual item itself, and whether they can trust the person on the other side. If you have these three different factors, you have a transaction. If you don't, you don't. Essentially, we wanted to focus on the peer-to-peer -peer transaction space. And once we started focusing on that, we understood that if we already know that 90% of people operate cross markets, and we already know that there are so many marketplaces out there, why not create a centralized system that essentially can create a full or web-wide view of who this person is, both from social information and from transactional information, ratings, reviews, comments, anything that they're already accumulated online, in order to build a better or smarter system for people to interact. That's the gist of how E-Rated started. And how did you start? Uh, so you had the idea, and how did you brought your idea to life? First off, we wanted to test our thesis, whether reputation from one marketplace can actually affect the buyer's decision in a different marketplace. So when we started, essentially we wanted to test. If we bring in reputation from eBay, to a different marketplace? Can that change how people interact? Can that increase conversion rates? Can that increase transactions inside the marketplace itself? Uh, so first off, we tested it in a marketplace based in New York. They're called Sideline Swap. They're like a marketplace for sports. Any person that uh, participates in sports or is like a sports enthusiast can buy and sell his products. And essentially, we allowed their users to combine not only their social information, but also combine their reputational information. So from eBay, Amazon, any other marketplace that they're currently operating in. And once we integrated our plugin inside and allowed users to actually display their, their existing information from anywhere out there online, we saw that not only do we increase conversion rates inside the marketplace in approximately 30%, we also increased the site sales or the site's transactions in approximately 8%. So that's how we initially started. And then we started partnering up with additional marketplaces, we raised money, and that's how e -Rated essentially started. Today we're live in approximately 20 different marketplaces and classifieds, um, not only doing the widget inside the marketplace, but also doing other, other stuff, but we can cover that a bit later on. Okay, cool, and, and uh, in what way uh, <coughs> does it practically work? So, so, so uh, you're, you're working together with marketplaces, and the, <coughs> the, uh, and the individuals, they can make a profile on E-Rated or how, how, how does it work? So first off, we partner up with a marketplace. We come up to a marketplace, we say, hey, we can increase your conversion rates, we can increase trust in your marketplace, we can increase liquidity in the site itself. We integrate our plugin inside, and once we integrate, every single user can create his E-Rated profile if he doesn't have one. Once he creates his E-Rated profile, all the information that we can find about him online is enriched inside the marketplace itself. So up until now, the marketplace had its had his name, his uh, picture, maybe some ratings or reviews that he's already accumulated in that specific marketplace. But with E-Rated, it essentially enriches every, th I mean every, th every single piece of information that he's already accumulated somewhere else online. So it can be ratings, reviews, vouchers, um, verifications that they already did, they verify their ID, their passport, anything that they already did online. And we essentially combine all that information into a single plugin that sits inside the marketplace itself. In addition, we also launched for Shopify, WordPress, WooCommerce, and people that have their own personal stores. Because most people that have a, it, their own personal stores online, they also sell in a marketplace. Personal stores are a means for them to make more money. But a marketplace is a better distribution channel for them. So they combine both. They start selling on Etsy, and once they have enough sales, they start sending them emails that essentially convert them back into their sites into their own personal stores because they really want to maximize the actual potential of how much money they can actually make out of every single transaction. So if up until now I was selling on Etsy and I was selling 
on Shopify as well. We also allow sellers on Shopify to essentially display their Etsy reviews, their Amazon reviews, their eBay reviews, or anything else that they're currently doing. And today we're also working in multiple verticals. So we started off only in products, people that, that are buying and selling physical products, but now we're also working in Airbnb style marketplaces. We're working with the largest Airbnb in India, we're working with classifieds, which is a bit different, um, services, which is um, storage or anything else like that. Essentially, in any single marketplace, the biggest hurdle is trust, and we solve that issue for marketplaces, or at least we help it, we help mitigate this issue in, in, inside marketplaces. Okay, so what you do is it's, it's, it's also make, um, making much richer reputation profiles than uh, when you only make the profile on, on one platform, but also uh, lower the threshold for for, uh, for new platforms also by the, the plugins uh, like uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, WordPress for people to, to start uh, their own websites because in the end uh, if you start a, 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 a new marketplaces yeah the, the problem is, is trust issue because people have an empty trust profile. Definitely I think that <coughs> if you take a look at the new trends of marketplaces or classifieds it doesn't really matter which one they're all moving towards a richer profile for every single individual that they have and why because people be, people look for a story People look not only at what the product is being sold, who the person is, which mutual connections do they have, what are their interests. They want to follow them on Twitter or Instagram. They want to see their likes on Pinterest. Uh, they want to, s to see that people in the community have already vetted them. And without, that s and without this vetting, it's very hard to actually create liquidity. Take a look at eBay, for example. Top-rated sellers on eBay can charge higher prices and convert much higher because because the actual community have vetted them before. Apartments on Airbnb that already have good reviews can charge higher prices. And why? Because people want to go to places that have already been vetted. People are lazy or people are scared because they don't want to take a risk. Essentially, eReddit mitigates this risk. It finds all the pieces of information that, that the user already has online and it shows it in one single centralized spot inside the marketplace or inside the store. Yeah, and so, uh, so you're working out together with, uh, with, with, with about 20 uh, different marketplaces, mm -hmm. and, but you're also get, uh, gathering information from many others. So uh, in what way, because uh, do you get the information from the other marketplaces? Essentially, most marketplaces have an API, so they expose the information. And if not, the, then we essentially log in as the user, we pick up the actual information, and then we collect, aggregate, um, and essentially process the information so we can present it and in other spots. And we have to repeat this action, uh, uh, let's say, every month? or, uh, or no, we it's a one-time thing, it's a one-time thing, and then we collect the information for you all the time. Okay, and then you have the information, and then you have loads of information, but in what way do you convert all this information into relevance uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 data f uh, for the users because the same also uh, because the fact that, that uh, I'm a good Airbnb host doesn't mean that, that, that uh, I'm a good driver. Of course. For Most example. people, let's say people are opting in from a product marketplace. Let's take Silent Swap for example, okay? This, this first marketplace that I was just mentioning before. If we take a look at, at Sideline Swap for example, most of their sellers or most of their users have opted in and connected product marketplaces. They connected their eBay account, they connected their Amazon account, they connected their Etsy account or any other account that they already had in that specific space. Some also connected their Airbnb account if they don't have any other information. But, mo <coughs> but most people that opt in connect, connect the accounts that are relevant for them in that specific space. Now I can't literally say that Airbnb information is relevant in an eBay style marketplace or that eBay style information is relevant in an Airbnb style marketplace. But what I can say is that if you don't have any data at all, it's much better to have something than not have anything at all. And that's why also people connect their social information. People want to see how many friends they have on Facebook, whether you have mutual connections, where did you go to school, where do you currently live, what are your interests, what do you post about on Twitter. Um, they want to take a look at, at your Instagram photos. I mean, people are curious, and we, and we essentially quench that thirst for, for, for curiosity, I think. Yeah, 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 but then still the question about how uh, are you going to put all this data into uh, uh, a good profile? Uh, so we have because the, uh, I think that's one of your biggest challenges. So we have two different manners. First off, we have a score. 
this score is our trust score that we calculate from all the different marketplaces or all of the different data sources that we have. And this is a one-stop shop. People are looking at that score and they can decide whether they want to buy or not. But also we present additional information like reviews, ratings, marketplace specific data if they want to look at, at more information or more specific information. Some people are the um, quick buyers and they'll only look at the score and some people are the curious shoppers and they take a look at the actual reviews and how are they performing on every single marketplace that they opted in through. So it's very, very different. People are different. We try to make it as easy as possible through a simple plugin. But I mean, I'm not sure that we're right. We keep constantly working on improving this. Um, I think that the numbers are speaking for themselves, but I mean, who knows? Maybe if we'll change um, the color or the layout, we'll increase conversion rates even more. Or maybe if we change the existing layout, we'll drop conversion rates. So, I mean, this is always a game of improving how, how we can maximize the actual potentials of people operating in marketplaces. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we started uh, uh, E-rated today because uh, uh, in which year was this? We started off about two years ago. Okay, so uh, uh, time flies. Time flies, exactly. <laughs> and at what way uh, did you find your first partners? Because uh, then you, had, then you had, had a good story. Uh, we contacted them through LinkedIn, actually. Uh, we liked their marketplace. It was a good size for us. It was rather small. Um, they were a startup like ours. Um, we met in New York. And then once we met in New York, I mean, we said, okay, let's do it. I believe in you. Do you believe in us? Yeah. We are not going to waste each other's time. It was based on a lot of respect and trust. And trust is what we're doing. Um, and thankfully, this is a partner that is still with us. Um, and is one of our best partners because they give us a lot of feedback, both from, both from their users and from their um, thoughts of how trust should be presented inside marketplaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's really interesting because uh, uh, talking about a external uh, a trust profile, uh, uh, at one side you have the benefits, which say also about conversion, about that you can grow much faster and mm -hmm. all these things. At the other side, what I also see is many marketplaces, they're really internally focused because they want to own everything themselves. Because when you ask, okay, uh, what, is a, uh, what is a marketplace worth? Yeah, it's just a piece of software uh, with the users, uh, but they all want to have their own data. So in what way do I you... I actually talk about that a lot. So I always say that a marketplace is a mixture of branding, because people come to a specific brand. People come to eBay because they know eBay. It's a combination of, <coughs> of inventory. If eBay had a big brand but didn't have a lot of inventory, then no one, no one would actually come. And last thing is user experience. And that's why you have mobile first marketplaces today that are, it, it, that are essentially conquering the market. It, if you take a look at the marketplace trends, a lot of, I mean, a lot of different marketplaces are, are tanking in traffic because everyone is moving to, to actual mobile. And if people didn't make that switch or didn't create a smart, I mean, a smart interface for people that only like mobile, then they're gonna lose the game. So, when you think about these three combinations, you, un you understand that all marketplaces are the same, except their brand and except their user experience. Because eventually they're gonna have exactly the same inventory because all sellers operate across, across all marketplaces. It's illogical not to operate across all marketplaces today. Because if I'm selling shoes, I'll, I want to sell it on every single shoe marketplace that I, that I can sell it on. And today, if I'm not mistaken, there are around five shoe marketplaces, sneaker marketplaces. But in addition, I mean, marketplaces want to maximize their existing potential. So I don't need the marketplace in order to read data from the marketplace, but the marketplace needs us in order to actually present information from any other data source. Yeah. So, I mean, eventually it's going to be a game of fear maybe, because marketplaces don't want to miss out on, on the benefits of e-reddit. And essentially I don't need them in order to read the information that they already have inside the system. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, and, it, and, it, 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 uh, and that's also maybe scary, but, but, but also that also will maybe will help them to join because then they know, okay, they already got the information, so yeah. why not uh, why join? And then also what you're, also, exactly. what you're also saying is that uh, it's a really high uh, competitive market. So uh, also the message to the, uh, to the marketplace is, okay, just focus on uh, what you're good at and just let us handle the uh, reputation part. Like any other business, I mean, why do, why do people implement mixed panel and don't measure everything on their own? Because they're not good at it <clears throat> and they want to focus on their own business. 
So people use external services uh, or SaaS services in order to maximize their, their business. They, they prefer paying the $20 a month or $30 a month to, to Mixpanel because they don't want to take care of it. Yeah. And if they did want to take care of it, it would be a different business. Yeah. So and uh, do you also have some customers over here in, the, in, uh, in Israel? No, we don't work with marketplaces here in Israel. Um, we would love to, but there aren't enough marketplaces here. There aren't enough classifieds here. There's, and if they are, they're very, very small. And in the beginning, we were partnering up with small marketplaces because we were just testing out the waters, understanding, I mean, how do we work? How do we play? How do we, how do we um, essentially maximize the actual potential of their users? But now we're only focusing on large ones. So uh, $100,000 or more. Unless small ones contact us and they'll operate on a self-service model. So they'll implement on their own and essentially will be just like customer support. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But most uh, most marketplaces that we partner up with today are very large ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, everybody is uh, producing really m uh, much data, uh, but uh, you can't just use them all. So, at what way do you make the decisions on which data sources you're you're using to enrich the, the, the trust profile? Because in the end, if you can start philosophing, you could almost use any data of people, even bank account data. Uh, credit data uh, uh, for the protest profile. First off, I hope that one day we'll have information from all data sources, okay? I mean, because then we can provide more value to every single user that opts in, whether he's in Africa, whether he's in Asia, whether he's in Australia, because you have these local marketplaces that we're not even touching, just because it's not global enough for us to give value to our users today. Mostly it comes from either our users, they ask, hey, can you add this specific marketplace because we're operating on this marketplace and we can't import uh, the existing information today. Or it comes from the actual marketplaces. Hey, most of our users operate also in this marketplace. Can you also add this specific data source? That's how we add data sources today. We don't choose on our own because what do we know? I mean, we know nothing. Yeah. Our users know more than us and our marketplaces know more than us. And that's how we operate today. And uh, about competition, because everybody is talking about uh, trust is a new currency. So I think there, there are quite so many people in the world busy because I think mm -hmm. the trust uh, discussion is, is, is the basic of, 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 of everything uh, when talking about marketplaces and marketplaces are growing uh, uh, every day. So uh, is it a busy market? I would like to think so, but not really, to be honest. I mean, when we started off, we had a lot of businesses that failed before us. So that was good for us because we were able to understand what, did, what they did wrong, how they approached the market wrong, or what, or what they did right, so we were able to actually encapsulate that knowledge into our business today. Today there are new businesses that are also starting. Um, some of them are approaching the market very, very smart. Some of them are just copying, and some of them are approaching the market very wrong, in my opinion, but maybe I'm wrong, who knows. Um, today we're by far, or if, or if I'm right at least, we're by far the, the, the market leader in our space just because I measure it by the number of partners and the number of profiles that we already have in our system. But um, hopefully we'll be able to keep this competitive advantage in our space today. Yeah. I think that everyone is trying to solve the same problem, it's just that people are tackling it in different manners. So some companies are going towards the, the, actual, the actual insurance space. So they come to a, to like a small marketplace and they say, we'll provide insurance to your users based on their reputation. But that means that they're coming to the small marketplaces and we don't want to tackle the small marketplaces because it's not enough value for us. It's not enough value for us to, to actually grow as a business. Some people are only doing it on their website and there are two or three of those that, that currently exist. So they say, tell your buyers to look at their profile to, to look at your profile at blah 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 dot com mm -hmm. but no buyers will ever opt out in order to look at external information whoever does that so we're trying to actually combine both the information inside the marketplace to essentially keep the keep the buyer in the same spot that he needs to actually opt uh, i mean to actually purchase and we're trying to um operate with larger marketplaces because otherwise you won't be able to grow your business at all in my opinion yeah that's clear and how big is your team now so, to, is, so today we're like a team of 10 uh mostly in tel aviv but we also have in boston and canada and in london 
Um, hopefully we'll grow both our US office and our Tel Aviv office. Um, our engineering here is in Tel Aviv, but most of our um, sales or partnerships is being done either in Europe or in the US. Yeah. And, 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 and what way do you find the right people? Because I, I also there, there were some job openings on the, on the, on the website and, I, yeah. w- and, and also when you look at salaries you see that uh, the developers uh, uh, are uh, <laughs> uh, really scarce and marketers <laughs> are not really scarce. Uh, marketing is easier to find, I mean I'll be honest. Um, we got 20 responses on the first day for marketing and we didn't get any response for, for, for developers just because developers in Israel never look for a job. People are headhunting developers. That's what we did before. And that's what we'll, and that's what we'll continue to do moving forward. We'll headhunt because that's the only way that you can find engineers in Israel. But uh, in terms of marketing, a lot of people are looking for a marketing job. And that's, that's why we have a big profile of people to sift through. Yeah. Um, Israel is very much like Silicon Valley in my opinion. So, I mean, Engineers are like the holy grail of what you need to find. Uh, marketers, I think that the very, very good ones, um, you'll work hard on finding. But I think that what, we're, what we need, we need is someone that has passion to what we're doing, likes e-commerce, likes marketplaces, likes peer-to-peer transactions, likes, likes trust. And um, if he has a hunger, he'll be able to do creative stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure about that. And, and what we got, because now you have four offices, uh, uh, 10 people, so how do you manage that? So how do you keep the, 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 the culture, but not, not, not only uh, the, the culture, but also the practical uh, stuff? So how do you deal with that? So first off, we have Skype calls every day. And we have Skype calls with video cameras uh, at all parts of the world. Usually in Israel and in London, it's in the afternoon. And in the US and in Canada, it's, uh, it's in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we have very, very weird times for, for calls, so 11, 11 p.m. Israel time or uh, 6 a.m. Israel time, but uh, I mean, that's okay. I mean, we have to adapt to uh, our business and the ability of us having people around the world helps us grow our network, helps us grow um, the number of partnerships and allows us to essentially reach out to people that we can reach out if we were only in Israel or only in the U.S. Yeah. And we also got a solution because uh, I also have quite some discussions uh, also with uh, academic people ab- about the trust issue and, and about marketplaces. And what they always say, okay, that it's, it's really interesting, but the danger is that you are excluding a group of people who are not really able to, c- to communicate online. Uh, so, uh, so they're not really good in, 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 in uh, getting uh, a, a right profile, getting the right picture. So there's also when we go to we're more and more on marketplaces and trust will be mm-hmm. even more important that a group of people will be excluded because they just don't have the skills uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to, to be good online. What, what are your thoughts about that? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know what... Me neither, so that's... I mean, I don't know how we can solve this. I know that classifieds in the very beginning, like Craigslist, for example, they didn't want to introduce reputation just because they were scared of uh, preventing this from being a pure C2C marketplace. Okay, C2C means that any, any person that comes into the website has an equal chance of selling like a person that's, uh, that's been on the website for 10 years. But most of them are shifting towards an identity model. Most of them are shifting towards a reputation model. So I'm guessing that they did something wrong or they understood that the market is, that people are looking for more and more of an identity space. And I think that the people that are not very, very well versed in, um, and um, creating their profile or picking the right picture or opting in. Uh, that number is shrinking towards the number of people that are creating the smart profile and that number is just growing. Because I mean, if we take a look at, at our parents' generation, I'm not sure that my dad would be able to pick the right, to pick the right picture or to pick the right uh, profile or, or essentially merge all the different accounts. But my dad mostly shops in physical stores. I don't remember when was the last time I went to a physical store. So I think that most of the population is shifting towards the people that are technologically advanced, if we call it like that, then people are shifting towards the other side. Yeah, That's my opinion. That's right. And maybe there will also be some businesses who, who will fi- fill the gap to, uh, so, so, so they will help you uh, I hope. to, to uh, yeah. enrich your profile. <laughs>
Uh, maybe it's also business. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what you say, okay, uh, the, 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 the marketplaces we are uh, uh, using data of, uh, uh, most, of, most of them they were uh, brought, up, uh, brought out b uh, by the people uh, who were using, but when you look uh, at, at the future of E-Rate, because there are also many possibilities, of course, uh, when talking about trust, because everything is about trust. So in what way do you make for yourself the right decision in which steps you are taking for the future? Essentially, we're, we're adapting it. And we're adapting um, with marketplace feedback. If we come in and say, hey, let's uh, build this feature because we think that this will increase your conversion rates or this will increase your revenue or this will increase uh, the number of opt-ins that you have to your site, if, the mar if all the marketplaces say no, then we know that it's not relevant. If all marketplaces say yes, then we know that it is relevant. We have the very good capability of, of uh, I and mean, one of my co-founders is one of the best animators, designers, and movie editors in Israel. So he creates a movie that essentially creates this feature. And then we send this movie out. If the marketplaces like it, or if the users like it, we build it. If they don't, we don't. Yeah. And then essentially we scrap that specific idea. So that is a big um, benefit that we have in our team today. But a lot of times we make mistakes. I mean. Some of the features that, you, you, that we built in the past are never being used. And some features that we don't think are important are being used more and more and more. And then we had to shift our business towards them. Yeah. Um, Can you give an example? For example, um, we created a vouching and recommendation system in our, in our website. Mm. Most people don't use it. They don't care enough. But, but then people started asking us more and more and more for carrying their existing reputation to Shopify and WordPress. I mean, that actually came out from our sellers. We never thought about that. And they started asking us, hey, can you create uh, the capability for us to take it to Shopify and WordPress? So first off, we um, allowed them to take scripts, and only the very, very technologically advanced were able to actually implement that. And then more and more people started asking us, uh, hey, can you build an app for Shopify? Okay, so we built the app for Shopify, and that's been doing really, really well. So yep. I don't know what is going to be next. We have our own thoughts and our own strategy, but hopefully um, we'll keep getting more and more suggestions from our community or from the marketplaces that we currently work with. And what are now your biggest challenges? Biggest challenges is always uh, market penetration. I think uh, for every single business in our space, it's gonna be market penetration finding the right uh, value proposition, both for the marketplaces, both for the buyers, and both for the sellers. If you fix this specific holy trinity, um, then, then you'll be able to conquer the market. And I think that businesses in our space either raise too much money too fast, and if they're not gonna make revenue, they're gonna just crash and burn because no one will invest in the first in the further rounds. And people that raise too little money, and they can't really compete with the people that already have money like uh, us or like others yeah so um, I think that challenges is always going to be market penetration still having the faith of um, of our investors and still having the faith of our user community yeah that we give them value and and uh, in the end uh, what, uh, what is your dream for e-rate so uh, let's say uh, we talk again in, in two years so where are you then I hope that e is going to be the Carfax for peer-to-peer -peer transactions Carfax is what people look at before they buy any single car um, in the US. I want people to look at their e rated profile before they make any peer to peer transaction online. That's my goal. Global. Global. Of course. Hopefully. Cool. Um, okay. And hopefully we'll make it. Okay. I wish you all the best with that. Thank and you. Uh, good talking to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>